In my previous presentations, we had an introduction to the concept of research critique. And then we discussed re research critique of the introduction section of a thesis or a research report and the literature review and background section of a research report or research thesis. The current presentation is aimed at discussing research critique of the methodology section of a research report or a research thesis that is also often called the chapter three of a research report. So to re reiterate, to recall the basic definition of a research critique is that research critique is an integral part of the research as a scientific method of knowledge. Generally, it is an appraisal of the aims, process, and outcomes of research undertaking. And the focus of research critique is um, generally on an analysis of the academic value and the strengths and possible weaknesses or challenges of the research undertakings that are presented in the form of research theses or reports or papers. Now, when we think about research critique of the methodology chapter or chapter three, there are two main criteria on the basis of which the, uh, the process of research critique takes place. The first one is relevance and the second one is rationalization. Relevance actually means that the, uh, that the methodology section or chapter, <clears throat> the areas that are covered in that section or chapter, um, are these actually relevant to the particular research that has been conducted? And secondly, the concept of, concept of rationalization. And so by rationalization, what we mean is that the researcher, the, the research critic has this question on their mind. Um, uh, and the question is, in what ways or how has the, uh, the researcher actually rationalized uh, or justified the selection of the methodological choices? So some of the main parts or concepts inside the methodology chapter that the research critique, uh, critic actually looks for, uh, in t uh, looks at in terms of their relevance and rationalization include the research paradigm, the research approach, the research design, the population sample um, parts, the data collection uh, tools and processes, the data analysis process, the validation process, and the ethical consideration processes. And also very importantly, most research critique also look at the kind of language format and presentation of the methodological part of the research report. So now, first of all, what is the main question on the minds of the research critic? when they are um, analyzing, when they are evaluating the methodology chapter. So the first one is research paradigm. Now, the main question is, at this stage that the research critic asks is, what research paradigm has been, uh, has the study uh, been conducted in, or what research paradigm has been adopted to conduct this study? Uh, and not just that, what rationale has been offered for paradigmatic choices. So generally in social sciences, um, there are mainly three paradigms um, in which the, uh, in either of which the researchers fit their particular research design in, the positivist paradigm, the, the, the interpretivist paradigm, and the pragmatist paradigm, or the third paradigm. Uh, so the researcher, the, the research critic will look whatever paradigm uh, the, uh, the researcher has adopted uh, for their study. Now the second one is the, and also uh, in what ways have they actually justified it. Secondly, research approach. Now what is the relevance and the rationalization of the research approach? So generally research approaches could be inductive or, or could, they could be deductive. And these are generally in line with the research, the paradigmatic choices. 
So if, for example, if a researcher has uh, adopted generally the positivist paradigm, the approach will generally be deductive. What if they have uh, adopted the interpretivist paradigm, their approach will generally be deduct uh, will generally be inductive. On the other hand, if the researchers have taken the pragmatist paradigm, there will generally be elements of induction and deduction um, uh, to various degrees, to various levels in that kind of approach. The next thing, um, uh, the relevance and rationalization of which the research critic looks um, at in, the, in critiquing the methodology section is the research design. Now, the research, the research critic actually uh, asks this question, what is the suitability and justification of the research design adopted? And secondly, has the research design been critically evaluated? So, it's not, so the first thing is, is the research design actually in line with the aims, with, with the aims and objectives um, and requirements of the research topic? And secondly, has the researcher rationalized it, critically evaluated it, and so their judgment is based on actually informed knowledge, informed understanding of the particular research design. So for example, if someone has uh, used quantitative research design, is that suitable for the, for the topic that is explored? Secondly, has the researcher rationalized it? And the same is the case with uh, the choice of uh, qualitative research design or mixed method research design. So whatever research design the researcher adopts, it is important that it is, it is um, suitable for exploring that particular topic, one, and second, that, it, that uh, the particular research design has been justified and rationalized with evidence and with critical analysis. The other thing is the research site, participants, population, and sample. So again, the research critic will look at um, the, the question of whether the methodology section or chapter offers sufficient detail and rationale of the choice of the research site, what research site has been, for example, uh, chosen, the participants that they have recruited for, for data collection, the population and the sample, whether the sample is representative in what, what's, what sample uh, technique has been adopted, what sample strate strategies have been adopted. So is there relevance and rationalization of the methodological choices related to these important considerations? This is something that also comes in the scope of the research critique. Now the next thing, important thing, is the data collection tool processes uh, in the methodology section. <clears throat> so again, the research critic will ask the question, have data collection tools and processes been comprehensively presented and critically appraised and rationalized? Uh, so it's not just that uh, the researcher takes one tool or another tool and they just describe that tool um, in the methodology section, but also there is need for the justification and rationalization of the use of that particular tool in that particular context for data collection um, in the particular research that has taken place. The other important thing is the data analysis processes and tools. So again, the research critic will ask these questions. Uh, what data analysis tools or processes have been adopted? And what, if any, justification is offered for adopting these tools and processes? So for example, if the researcher has collected quantitative data, the, uh, the research critic will look at the suitability of the particular quantitative or statistical tool or test that has been used to analyze that data. And is that test in line with the 
analysis of the data in line with the research objectives or hypotheses or questions or not. Um, if, on the other hand, the researcher has collected qualitative data and, for example, they have used uh, thematic analysis, what is the relevance and utility of that kind of analysis? Which model have they used from numerous models of, for example, thematic analysis and why? These are important questions um, that should be answered inside the thesis, but also when the, uh, the viva or the oral examination takes place. The next important thing, consideration on the part of, uh, on the mind of the research critic is the validation or authentication. So again, the important question that they will ask is what steps measures and measures have been put in place to make the research process and outcome valid, reliable, and authentic. Because validity, reliability, and authenticity are important considerations in research. So if the research has, the, the research critic has doubts about the, um, these considerations, or if the researcher has failed to present the issues of validity, reliability, and authenticity um, in a comprehensive way, that can cause problems in terms of the re evaluation report that comes from the, uh, from the critic. And lastly, ethical considerations. Um, it is very important that the, 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 the research has been conducted keeping in view ethical considerations. So the research critic um, or examiner will actually look at this particular question. Has the research process been conducted keeping in view ethical considerations? Um, that is, for example, some of the most important ethical considerations that research critics will look at include informed consent. Uh, have the participants uh, been included in the research study after informed consent? What is the, uh, what is actually, what measures were taken for ensuring confidentiality or anonymity? And what processes were put in place in order to make the reporting of the, uh, the research process authentic? So these are some of the important questions that relate to the various uh, sections of the methodology uh, chapter or section of the research thesis or research report. And uh, the research critic will look critically at these various sections and subsections, keeping in view these important questions. So therefore, it is important for research students as well and for research report writers and for researchers in general to have these questions on their mind when they are structuring and writing the methodology chapter of their uh, or section of their research reports.